So here's another example of when it should be for independence. The difference in this problem is I'm just giving you probabilities. So you again, it's one of those I give you some numbers, you got to figure out some symbols to use for the problem. Okay, so 55% of all students at the university are female, and 30% of all students at the university graduate in four years. 13% of all students at the university are women who graduate in four years. So our gender and graduating in four years independent. So it looks like there's two different things I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm talking about female students, and I'm talking about students who graduate in four years. Okay, so first thing I need to do is just write some probability statements. So we see that 55% of all students are female, so that would be the probability that your female would be 55%. Okay, and 13% of all students, I'm sorry, 30% of all students graduate in four years. So it would be the probability that you graduate in four years would be 30%. And 13% of all students at the university are women who graduate in four years. That's an and statement. Right, so the probability that you're female and graduate in four years is 13%. Okay, so I'm going to use F and G for my female or, and then G for graduating four years. Okay, so again, we're looking at my F is my A and my G is like my B idea. Okay, so the 55% is the probability that you're female. This is the part that I just talked about. The 30% is the probability that you graduate in four years. And then that 13% is the prob that your probability that you're female and graduate in four years. Okay, so to check for independence, right, it looks like I should just be able to use this one, right? Right, probability A and B, if they're independent, will be the probability of A times the probability B. We know the probability of A and B, that's F and G, that's 13%. So if I multiply these two probabilities together, do I get 13%? So the probability that you're female times the probability that you graduate in four years is actually about 16.5%, which is not 13% that I have here. Okay. So since those two numbers don't equal each other, gender and graduating in four years are not independent. Okay, so they're somehow associated. Okay, so it just means that if you if you know that you have a female, the probability of graduating in four years is going to be different than if you know you have a male. Okay. Okay. So let's look at independence and repeated events. Okay, so 8% of all babies are born with an overbirth rate. If 10 babies are born tonight at the hospital, we want to find the probability that at least one is born with a low birth weight. So we're going to assume independence. In other words, if one baby is born with a low birth rate, that doesn't change the probability that the next baby is born with a low birth rate. Okay. So the, in other words, how the weight of one baby is not dependent on the weight of any of the other babies at this hospital. Okay, so again, we're going to use notation and we're going to write the probabilities that we know. We're talking about a baby being born with a low birth rate. Okay, so that's that 0.08. So, right, that's just the probability that the baby is born with a low birth rate. You can abbreviate that sum if it would help. Okay. Now, we actually want to know the probability that at least one is born with a low birth rate out of these 10. Okay, so if I think about this, I can use the complement of the event, the probability of the baby is not born with a low birth rate, that is actually going to be 92%. And again, that's just using our, my complement rule. Okay, probability of, of A complement equals 1 minus the probability of A. Okay, so those two numbers actually add up to 100%, right? Because either a baby is born with a low birth rate or they're not born with a low birth rate. Okay. So, we're going to let x be the number of babies born with a low birth rate. Okay, so the probability we are looking for is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, this is a little different than what we've been talking about before, because now I have repeated events. That's what makes this different. Okay, so now I have to actually count how many babies are born with a low birth rate. So in this case, since it's at least 1, I just need that count, which is what we called x, to be greater than or equal to 1. Okay. So, my choices are either none are born with a below birth rate, or you could have one, two, three, four, or all the way up, right? Or you could have none born with a low birth rate. So what we're looking for is everything except one being born with a low birth rate. So again, I'm using the complement rule here. So I'm going to do one minus the probability that x equals zero. 
Okay, now remember, X is the number of babies born with a low birth rate. Okay, so we want the probability that none are born with a low birth rate. Okay, again, using the um, the probability, that, I'm sorry, using that these are independent events, remember the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, so this one right here, that one is this one. So minus, minus now, now we want the probability that x equals 0. Okay, so that's 1 minus the probability that the first is not a low birth rate, right? Because remember, we want 0 borns, babies born with a low birth rate. So we have to look at the first one cannot have a low birth rate, the second one can't have a low birth rate, all the way to the, the how many babies are being born? Um, 10. All the way to the 10th one can't have a low birth rate. Because think about what it means to have none have a low birth rate. That means all of them have to be not a low birth rate. So this etc. would be times the probability that the third is not a low birth rate all the way to the 10th one not being a low birth rate. Okay. Now you hopefully this makes sense why I did this now. Okay. You might first wondered how did I knew to do that. Okay. Because that's kind of what's going to happen. Okay. So that means each of these numbers is 0.92, and remember I'm going to have 10 of them, right? So I'm going to have 1 minus 0.92 to the 10th, which is about 0.57 or 57%. Okay, so there's about a 57% chance that at least one of the 10 babies will be born with a low birth rate. Okay, so the key to this whole problem is actually in this sentence right here. Since we want to know what's the probability that at least one is born with a low birth rate, it's one minus the probability that none are born with a low birth rate. That's the key to doing the whole thing. Okay. okay. Otherwise, you have to say, well, what's the probability that the first one has a low birth rate, the second one has a low birth rate, but remember it's at least one, so you can actually have the first one have a low birth rate, the second one not have a low birth rate, but the third one has a low birth rate, or maybe just the first one. There's lots of probabilities where you have at least one with a low birth rate, but there's only one way to have none of them with a low birth rate, and that's why we switched it over to that one. Okay. Okay, and then in the next video, you'll talk about the law of large numbers.